Welcome to the Football Filling, everybody. We have got a special five-minute segment with just Dan Byrne. The content we bring you on the Football Filling is unrivaled. And what a weekend we've just had in the Premier League as well. Liverpool are top. Villa are actual title contenders. Everton, three in a row. Man United got pumped by Bournemouth. Fulham have scored 10 goals in two games. It's all kicking off. And we've got a giveaway for you. We have got a signed Dan Byrne. Newcastle shirt from the main man himself. Make sure you watch the whole episode to find out how you can win it. Let's get into it. Come on, boys. Right then, boys, as usual, we've got Super Dave Watson, goalkeeper Dave Watson, not the Everton defender Dave Watson. And we have got Mark Goldbridge, fresh off of a 3-0, pumping by Bournemouth. He is absolutely spitting feathers. However, we're going to start with Aston Villa against Arsenal, you lot. Villa, two massive results in a week, Man City and Arsenal. Genuinely, are they title contenders? I called it. I did it on win, lose or draw. I said Villa are going to beat Man City. And what a game. What again? Yeah. I don't think they've got the credit they deserve. I, I had the United game on, and but because it was on Prime, you could watch both. And I was, it's hard to watch both when you're watching United. But I was looking at the stats, and it was nil nil. And they were like, Popping City up. had two shots on target, yeah. and Villa had about ten. And I'm like, I can't remember the last time somebody did that to City. I know they didn't have Rodri, but that's that's amazing. And then I think against Arsenal, they would just um, get the early goal. Probably you, you lads would know more than me. I think they've almost scored a little bit too soon. Yeah. Because then they've got it, they, they sort of go into themselves. But they were resolute at least. They were resolute. And I think, yeah, you know, sometimes you win scrappy and sometimes you win well. And that's just, I mean, you've got to put them in. I don't think they will win the title, but they've got every right to be in there. What I don't like is people saying, could they do a Leicester? Because yeah. Leicester won the league when everyone else was shit. Yeah. They, if Villa win the league this year, they're up against Arsenal, Liverpool, City, who are fantastic. And Villa deserve all the plaudits, and I'd love them to win it. Uh, 15 home wins in a row. What a 15 home wins, that's ridiculous. No, the, the, the record they've got at Villa Park, it, it's incredible. I mean, it, the job he's done there, it's been the transformation of all transformations, yeah. hasn't it, since he, he took over from Steven Gerrard. But I think when you look at it, in a week like they've had, and you're playing the other two top teams in the league, really, at home, and you keep two clean sheets, I think that's the foundation where it's all built. And we spoke about <laughs> Martinez in goal, numerous times he actually didn't have that much to do against City no. because the guys in front of him did a phenomenal job I actually thought on Saturday against Arsenal Arsenal were a little bit wasteful and missed some good chances yeah. Martinez made a couple of decent saves but they actually you know missed a couple of good chances as well but but they deserve that look Villa they've been the, the, the team of the season really for yeah. me because they've now got into Europe they're playing in Europe the same as all the other big boys Maybe even more difficult on a Thursday night, in some regards, than you're playing on a Sunday. But to have a week like that this week, and actually certainly dominated City in terms of winning that game, I think not so much so against Arsenal, but to win the game 1-0 and be really solid in that top four. A comfortable 1-0 win it was as well. Yeah. Well, well, it was comfortable. You kind of, I never expected... Arsenal score. I never really expected Man City to score either. Do you know what I mean? When when you look at Villa, the defenders, they're good, solid defenders, but then the goalie as well and all of it, I just think, oh, it's just so reliable. It just brings the calmness. The it's goalie so reliable. brings the calmness. And actually, in the end, when Havertz gets the ball and they're scrambling away, um, with VAR now, it's handball, isn't it? Oh, it's handball. But, it's hit his hand three times. But, but I have to say, like, we talk about VAR every week. I just hate the thing with the handball for the yeah, attacker. Yeah. You know, we'll come on to it when we talk about Manu Bournemouth. And I know the game's finished the fourth goal, but you can't be ruling goals no, out agree, for, yeah. for little bits but and that, that, That's like where this. we are now, though, yeah? That's where we are. I saw Gary Lineker said something, didn't he, on Match of the Day, uh, uh, the weekend, and he said, basically, I was a big advocate for VAR and I wanted it. He said, but now it's ruining the game and I've done a full U-turn on it. I don't like it. I don't want it there whatsoever now. We've been there for months and months and months. Longer months. than that. We've been there for, for yeah, no, sure. pretty much since the get-go, to be perfectly honest with you. But the handball one with Havertz, uh, as soon as it brushes his hand, I'm thinking, well, it's disallowed. Yeah. And, and I've got it in my head now that it's, it's disallowed, so why are you even asking about it? It, it must have brushed his hand two or three yeah, times. If it touches your thinking, fingernail, and I'm you're, thinking, you're done it's, it. It's, it's nothing. Even though it doesn't alter the fact the ball would have still dropped there and he still would have scored... So in olden days, it would have been a goal. But nowadays, it's just in your head now. And I just think, ah, it's just absolutely rubbish. But do you know what this does? Do you know what this does, though, is 
beating the likes of Aston Villa and Man City at home now means that any club going to play at Villa Park are shitting themselves. I promise you, they are absolutely thinking, fearing the worst now. If you're a Fulham, if you're a, a Chelsea, Everton, you go to Villa Park now and you're thinking, oh, this is, you know, we'll be lucky to well, get away with something. It's, it's the fortress in the league now, isn't it? Everybody felt that way going to City. Yeah, City and, and Liverpool in previous years yeah, as well. Yeah, but now Villa seem to have got the thing. The one thing I'd say about Villa compared to a City or a Liverpool, and this is where they maybe need to strengthen in January, you don't always feel as though they're going to blow teams away three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a City of Liverpool, you know, on their day, they've got the firepower potentially to blow teams away. If Villa can add, add to that final third of the field... Well, it's their, away, it's, it's their away record, isn't it? Their very next game is Brentford away. Yeah. And, and you know, if you want to be in a title race, you've got to go and win Brentford away. Will they win against Brentford away? Their home form is amazing, but they have dropped points away from home haven't they at the moment but I mean I don't know do you think it's sustainable under Villa and Emery do you think they can last the course I, I agree with you it's their away form home form obviously 15 in a row it speaks for itself you know pretty much what you're going to get at home but it's these difficult away games you see even the likes of you know like Arsenal last week going away and scoring laid these last minute goals these are the sort of goals these are the sort of games that win you leagues and I, I still do worry that into the new year when Man City get their De Bruyne's back and they're, they're popping a little bit more. I think they can go on a big old dirty run, which yeah. will blow everybody out of the water. Um, but like most teams, I think they'll try and um, strengthen in January. It's just where they're going to strengthen and how they're going to strengthen and who's going to be available for what money as well. Because nowadays, everybody knows that players, they're going to go for crazy money. Well, it, yes, it's all about money. I think the ownership behind Villa, they've got the money for sure. But it would have been a point in previous seasons where you're not going to attract the players. Yeah, sure. But but Villa now can attract the players. Yeah. They've got European football. They'd expect to have European football in whatever guys that is next year. And they're in the top four. If you can't attract the top, top players at this point, then you're never attracting them to come to Villa. All right. Well, we're going to talk about Liverpool in a second. Then before we move on, Villa, top four finish at least? I think, I think top four with home form should be in this league. Yes. Top four finish? I don't think they will, no. No, it's that sort of league, though. You know, it, you never know. It is. It's very, very tight. Um, Top four. Um, <laughs> there you go. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know what I base this on. I, I, I'm in the Birmingham area for Christmas. No, do you know I'm what it is? Do you know what it is? I, I don't know what I base this on because I'm. Maybe it's like history. Mm. Yeah, and the fact that Villa don't finish in the top four, and maybe it's just ingrained to me. But to who takes this? Is a question then who takes fourth place? We know Man City, Liverpool, and Arsenal get it. The problem is, I agree with you both, experience suggests that Villa will drop off. But who is taking that spot? Do you know, do you know what's killing everybody at the minute? European football, yeah, European football is what is is absolute like Newcastle Man are getting United. hurt by it, Man United are getting hurt by it, Villa are getting hurt by it, West Ham they're playing in the. It's Brighton. It Brighton. It it ruins your Premier League. Spurs have got a good shout. Spurs have got a good shout for it. To be fair, Spurs. If they can get some of those injuries back, maybe if they can strengthen again, it's who can strengthen. The January well. transfer window is massive. Yeah, it is. It's massive. Uh, all right, let's talk about Liverpool then. Um, top of the league. They are my dark horses of the season. They just, you talk nonsense. They are my dark horses. I can't horses. speak. I'm the one who's been saying Liverpool, and that you keep you two keep getting it in the comments going. Well, they must they must not be aware of Liverpool because I keep I've, saying I've what a great job. It, I've been. Thinking Changing it at least, all right. I've been thinking it, okay. Um, but they just seem to go about their business. You know, I didn't watch the game on Saturday, I but did. I'm listening to it on the radio, right? And I'm thinking, I've got Mo Salah as captain here in my FPL. This is the worst week ever. Eventually, boom, gets the goal, and then Harvey Elliott comes on. Um, what a goal. I want to talk about the goal quickly, all right? Because goalie, sub goalie had just come on. Um, Remy Matthews, little story about him. Yeah. When I first went to Norwich, he was a young guy just coming through. I sent him out on loan to Wroxham. I don't even know what league Roxham playing. How do you spell Roxham? W R O X H A M. Oh, okay. Went out Wrexham to go and play. <laughs> went out to go and play at Roxham. I went to the stadium probably six, eight, ten times to watch him play on a Tuesday night, and that's where he started. So at 29 years of age, for him to come on and make his Premier League debut, I was like quite emotional about it. But in terms of the reality of the goal, he'll be disappointed when he sees it purely because. He's got two guys blocking the goal to his right, but he just transfers his weight to his yeah. right, yeah. thinking he's probably going to pop it. And as he drives it in his near post, just because his weight's on his right leg, and he's hit it well. 
it, it's in. And he can't goal. get back over there, can he? It, it, it doesn't look like it's um, and the goalie error. It look, doesn't look well. It's not a goalie error. It, but it, it looks like it's just a good finish, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but what it is, the goalie he can't get beat in that near post there. He can't unless that ball goes in that very top corner bit. Yeah. You can't get beat there, can you? You you would expect your goalkeeper to have that covered and trust that the defender's going to block that other side of the goal. And if he bends it round him, fair dues, fair dues. But I think just watching the way Harvey Elliott runs up to the ball, I think... You can you, see he's never bending it. You can it. see he's it, never going to bend it. If you think about two of the goals we, we'll probably talk, yeah. like Wilson for uh, Fulham. Oh, he, he's, he's bending it. You McAtee, know he's Chef it. United, yeah. bum. He's not got that body shape. No, he's wound but, it up to dig it, hasn't he? But, but Remy, yeah. he's just come on the field. Yeah. It's his first four minutes of Premier League football. Oh. And even though he's trained with these guys, he'll be used to the pace of it and whatever. It's just the quality of the league. When that ball comes flying at you at 70 mile an hour on the Saturday afternoon and you're not used to it, phew, it comes a lot faster than that, doesn't it? it you are, I just I, wanted him to make the save. I, I wanted it to finish 1-1. As soon as he come on, you know you, you're feeling the sub goalie. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not ready because you are ready, but you just want him to come on, let the game finish, 1-1, one, one, I would have been delighted. Um, talk to me about Liverpool then. Um, are they genuine title contenders now? Like I say, they're, they're top of the league right now, um, 16 games gone, and they kind of have just been going about their business, really. Never really, for me, never really kind of stole any headlines or anything. They're just, they're just top of the league. I think, they, um, I think they caught a couple of fixtures this week at the right time. Yeah. You know, Fulham... They're losing 10 minutes, Anfield, and That's then and Palace looked like they were going to get a result. United, sorry, the well. red card changed the game. I think even Klopp said it. 70 minutes, Ayu <laughs> gets sent off, and Liverpool probably aren't winning. It was never a, never a red card, by the way. No. No. It was well, a disgrace of the red card. We'll talk about refereeing again, and we'll talk about VAR. Look, the, the first one, Van Dijk tries to take a quick free kick. But he jumps out of the way of it. Yeah, I know. So he don't even touch him. Yeah, it happened, and he gives in, the, him it happened in the Villa game and they didn't book him either. And he gives yeah. him a yellow card and then to get sent off for that. I don't know if it's because they've made so many mistakes on second yellow cards. Well, I he mean, he's delayed pushed, it as well, he's didn't he? He's pushed him over and he gives him a second card. And yeah, they get the whole game changed on that minute. But like if you go back to the actual goal or the penalty that they get. Yeah. How can that ever be a penalty when Hazus doesn't get the penalty in the game exactly. we've just discussed? Play had gone on for two minutes, one minute forty-five. One I mean, minute 45 but it's driving well. everybody insane. It cannot be a penalty. There's no way it's a penalty. Well, I, I don't understand why it is. Maybe one of you two do because ultimately it's soft. Um, you know, if anyone hasn't seen it, the Crystal Palace player gets in front, ter- control of like trampoline it, control, yeah, yeah. ball's gone, yeah, little yeah. touch. One minute forty-five. You might want to look at this. And I'm sat there going, hold on a minute. VAR is for clear and obvious mistakes. The referee has seen it and said no penalty. So why is VAR saying, have a look at this yeah, soft why penalty? Why are they intruding? Because it's not clearly an obvious mistake. Quickly, in the office, VAR, yes or no? No. No. Luke? Jamie? No. Tom? No. no. Oh, you my God. Game. It's gone. It's gone. Well, we've just voted out. But you know that game, actually, I think is probably the worst game I've watched this season for VAR. The stop starting. Yeah. It's I was like, I was watching American football. Yeah. I was like, this is a joke. That's, that's, that that's what that ruins penalty. it. That's yeah. what ruins but it. But I think it. that's it's the way it's that. become. Behind the scenes, they are petrified now. Too many mistakes. And the, the, they can't make an honest mistake. They can't make a, a poor decision and make a mistake. I don't think they've got nowhere to go with it because yeah. every action now, they can't win. Well, look, at the, look at the penalty that. in the first half as well that they overturned. Because they went back the tackle, and fouled yeah. the foul on Ando. And I'm like, how far are we going back? Like, Did you see the, the Liverpool second goal against Sheffield United in the week? Nunes. Yeah. yeah. He, he scissor tackles the lad from behind, yeah? Gets the player first, then takes the ball. <laughs> and, it's, and I'm thinking, oh, the game's no, but gone. If, if you're it's Howard Webb now and you're sat behind the scenes and you've got your team and you have a meeting on Monday morning, I actually don't know what he's going to say to them. Yeah. Because... They're in such a grey area with it all now. It's finished, yeah. and it has to finish. I, 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 Stay I, as we are, offside. I, I felt for uh, I felt for Roy Hodgson. I felt for Palace a little bit, to be honest with you, because they they give a real good account of themselves as well. And Roy Hodgson was fuming. He was absolutely fuming at full time as yeah, well, and rightly so as well. I, absolutely, it's cost him the game. But I think again for Liverpool, we touched on it on the show last week. I think Allison coming back makes two massive saves mm. early on. That and one. Then, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and, then, say? and then manages to just get his elbow yeah. on it. To and then flick last, it back last again. kick from the wide free kick from yeah. Addison's header. They're the moments that actually mean that they're at the top and potentially can go on. And Liverpool win. are dangerous for the title because they're growing. Yeah. They're growing and they're up there. And I think they really missed McAllister. I think he's been a great signing. I think the midfield we've spoken about before. I still don't think Nunez is fully firing. Um, I feel like if they were playing Man City, well, they've got Arsenal. If they play, that Arsenal game's massive for me. Yeah. 
Um, I did an interview in the week actually with uh, Jurgen Klopp. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I did a. Uh, Amazon. Never heard of him. Uh, uh, he, he was a legend, by the way. Yeah. What a lovely, lovely bloke. We had uh, 15, 20 minutes. It was for an Amazon like quick interview kind of thing. Um, and he was talking to me about some of the leaders. So I said, oh, you know, I mentioned the likes of you know your Jordan Henderson and your James Milner leaving, and how detrimental that could be for the team in terms of leadership. But he says we've got so many leaders in our team. The people like you wouldn't even believe would be leaders are uh, obviously Allison, the goalkeeper. He's singing his praises, saying he is like one of the top guys. He's looking looking after Kelleher this week, but being in net and all that. But um, no, he was top class, and I think that for me is where Liverpool have got an advantage over everybody else is those kind of leaders and the manager at the same time. Um, 200 goals now for Mo Salah um, for Liverpool. Um, And by the way, that puts him joint 10th uh, in the Premier League top 10 list with Michael Owen. Did you know that? No, I think he's massively underrated though. Who, Mo Salah? In terms of what? I just think, I actually think he never gets mentioned for Ballon d'Or. He never gets mentioned in the Mbappe. I I just think, I don't know what it is, never understood it. His his consistency is ridiculous. People still would say Hazard better than Salah. And I'm like, ah. Well, consistency, longevity. And one season, didn't it, where you would say he was like undefendable. But Salah, and and I think the 200th goal shows you that it's season after season Mm. after season. And that's what the top, top players have. Yeah. yeah, true that. Um, right, Mark, it's um, unfortunately, mate, it's time. Let's start off before we talk about Man United against Bournemouth. Let's talk about goalkeeping. Um, I've been waiting for this one. You might have seen the goal that Chris, uh, Chelsea scored last week. Yep. I said, and I'm not a goalkeeper, I'm either, I'm either learning or I'm not. And I said, the pace of that shot in the bottom corner, he should save it. He's too close to his line and he should take a step to his left. He's too far to his front post. What do you think? That's the goalie coach. No, one hundred percent. I, I, I <laughs> we, we've spoke about it a lot about the the movement when you when when the player's driving away from the goal, yep. you have to set at a certain position because if you track and always follow that, at some point you're going to be outside the line of the goal. Yeah, the one that is clever from Palmer is is reversed it, and we talk about the shot between legs and everything. But if you track too far and your weight's on your right side as he reverses it, you're finished. Yeah. The key to goalkeeping is at certain points being set. So that means at a certain point you have to stop because the goalies are so good now, strong, powerful, powerful, athletic, the physique that they've got, you can sometimes stop in a really poor position and all the attributes you've got, you can save it. Yeah, get you if, out of it. But if you're caught moving and tracking the line of the ball all the time and never fully set, you're going to get done with scrappy goals like that. And it looks all day as though you should save it. But in the end, he's got no chance because he's following the line, moving, weight transfers on the wrong side. And even though it's a P-roller, the dynamic doesn't let you get back there. Yeah, you've got to get set, basically, because the second you're set, you can at least push and go. But you're moving, you're, you can slip, you can do anything. But the ball comes so fast nowadays, even these, like, it looks like it's a P-roller, it's still going at a decent pace. But it doesn't matter, if you're not set, you ain't going to be able to get back and push in time. As well, I will talk about the Bournemouth goal as well. You know, the header... Mm. Where it goes sort of there, yeah. it's it's like he doesn't put his hand. I, out I just me. I just think week after week. It's like week, he doesn't put his hand out to try and save it. Week after week, I think it probably comes down to your guys' assessment because even I look at it and go, yeah, the, the naked eye probably isn't blaming him. Like they didn't blame him for the Chelsea goal, but I'm like, and maybe it's the De Gea factor. I just look at these goals and go, I think he's saving some of these. Yeah. Even though it doesn't look like it's the keeper's fault, I'm like, I think De Gea's made saving. The, the billing header. It's the billing header. Isn't yeah, it? The yeah, second yeah. goal. Yeah. Um, I just feel like if he's set, and I mean, again, it's the same thing. The ball's coming into the box and it's like he's still moving across the, his line and he's not letting himself get set to be able to react it's to anything. He's in a good position for the cross, isn't it? Like, I thought Bournemouth were excellent on the day, fully deserved the win. But if you think you've got Shaw playing left side, centre half, yeah. and then he's coming in on the back of Shaw, when you're playing in goal, yeah. you know you've got to protect. Normally, if you've got two strong centre halves or three, you're playing three centre halves. You don't have to be as dominant as a goalie because they're covering the middle of the six-yard box for you. But when you've got a a guy who's not got the physicality, as in a short... Or the height, yeah. Or the height to to deal with it, you're going to be more aggressive in your crossing position because you want to try and help your teammate. And also, if you don't come for that cross, you're in a better set position in the middle of the goal to make a save. So I thought Bournemouth were excellent, exposed Shaw in terms of the height deficiency in that area and coming in inside him and the fullback. But the goal is never going to help you, and he's not then in a good position in the yeah. middle of the goals. We talked about it last clip for uh, Liverpool. The top teams can dominate everything. They still need a top, top goalie yeah. if you're going to win the league. Yeah. And Man United, for all we talk about, haven't got it. 
Mm. I think that that second goal is, I think that's the game changer as well. Once that second goal goes in, heads really start to drop then, and it's like, oh, let's get over here. Here, here we go again. Um, and like what I said there, you either you're a goalie that either comes out for the cross and tries to punch it and help your defenders out, or you stay on your line. A De Gea, a De Gea, for example, would save that because he knows his qualities he knows his better attributes are staying on his line and reacting to stuff and he would have saved it i promise you anana's caught in the middle of the two doesn't know really what to do and that's why the ball goes in the back of the net but talk to me about the game in general were man yeah. united just were they blown away from the get-go or did they at least put up a, a little bit of a fight yeah i mean it's not anana's fault i just bring him up because i just think that man united this season with the herring goal still would be in a better position yeah. but they'd still be struggling and they start that game really slow Ten Hag said it in the press conference, you know, everyone's killing everyone in this league. You've got to start and respect really well. Started slow. The first goal, sloppy. Half the team, Bruno's pass. McTominay doesn't tackle. Amrabat's dead on his feet. Um, Luke Shaw and Maguire. I mean, Solanke's in a, the obvious position, unmarked yeah. by 10 metres, tapping it into the back but of the They net. didn't smell that danger no, at all, did they? Just... Nobody in that Man United, even the midfield and the whole defence as well, nobody could smell that danger. And it was literally two Bournemouth players that did it as well. They took eight players out. They took eight players out in one move. The guy won the 50-50, ran straight through about five players, cut the ball back. Solanke gets in between Maguire and I think it's Luke Shaw. Game over. But it amazes me because, you know, I was doing the watch along the United stand and then you've got all these people going ten hog out, ten hog out. And I'm like, have you been in a coma for 10 years? Like this, as much as it's not acceptable and it's frustrating, it's what we do. Yeah, it's we it's are, what we yeah. do. It's yeah. like, it's, this is what we are now. For some reason, within that club, within that playing squad, is the ability to just, you never know what you're going to get. And it's, it's baffling, but they just don't turn up. Even though you know you've got to respect Bournemouth, even though anyone can beat anyone in this league, I mean, if we were away at Luton on Saturday, Luton would have three points. Yeah, You see what they've done at home. It's, it's very frustrating, but there's just a mental block with those players, and we've got Anfield next. I've got to, I've got to give a bit of praise to Bournemouth, because I, like, I really enjoyed watching Bournemouth. I think, they're, I think they're a very good team. And a lot of people actually almost disrespecting them on that result of the weekend, saying that this might be one of the worst home defeats for Man United like ever, or in recent years or whatsoever. But I think if you look at Bournemouth of a team, really well coached, really well drilled, mm -hmm. and they just... They know how to, they can, like I say, they can smell when they get a chance, when they get an opportunity. Whereas I think Man United are just a bit too sort of like, just kind of wait for stuff to happen a little bit, really. Well, I thought um, the game plan from Bournemouth were pretty clear. They kicked off and they basically gave Man United a goal kick. Yeah. They said, right, here we go. We're going on the press. high press. Iriola's done an unbelievable job, even though they've had rocky roads mm. uh, along the way. They knew going to Man United, let them have the ball. We set up as a press. They will give us moments. And if we can kill in them moments, then we're, we're going to have a real good chance of winning the game. And it was as simple as that. I don't think they would have worked really too much in the week on, on their ball retention. They just said, we're going to give it Man United. You know they're going to set up to play. And you saw it from the very first action. And they were high on them. And Man United ultimately weren't good enough in certain areas with the ball and it just played into uh, Bournemouth's hands and in the end they were well well deserving of the victory I spoke about it earlier I mean how you can rule the fourth goal out which I agree. epitomises yeah. everything we've just said they had another one disallowed as well in the first uh, half it, 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 it's just incredible but, but Man United are going to play how Man United play and if a team sets up like that now it'll be interesting to see how many teams actually follow that Bournemouth blueprint and so, right, yeah, we'll just let you have it because we don't think you're going to hurt us too much. I'll tell you where Man United are right now. Since um, since Alex Ferguson retired, yeah, Man United have lost 35 games in the Premier League at home. Throughout his whole career, he only lost 34 Premier League games. That tells you so much about where Manchester United are and that Old Trafford stadium, that pitch. It used to be an absolute fortress. You used to dread going there. You used to know that you were going to get ran over and bullied and punished and punched and everything. And it's just not there anymore, is it? No, and I think um, I don't think it's anything to do with the fans. Um, I think there's still 75,000 people there waiting to roar and turn it into yeah. an atmosphere and a cauldron, but they don't do it. Like, you know, we were talking on the United Stand, weren't they, when you were there? It's like... You said it's the leaders in the dressing room, it's the manager, first 10 minutes. So it's so obvious, first 10 yeah. minutes, Old Trafford. They're bubbling anyway, you just got to turn the heat up. And they don't, they turn the heat down and the crowd are like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. And then the home team are like, we've got it. But flowing that back, you would have been to Old Trafford post Sir Alex um, and you would have been there with Sir Alex. Yeah. What what did you feel as a, as a West Brom or a Watford player going to Old Trafford over the last 10 years in your career? Oh, 
mate, you were fair in the worst. Same with you were at Southampton, Norwich, no matter where you were, Birmingham. Whenever you went away to Old Trafford, you knew that you uh, it's the same. It, it almost feels the same as what it would be with a Liverpool or a Man City. You were lucky to come away with a three-nil loss. But Generally. even even with the Moyes and the Van Hals and the Reno's in charge. At the start, at the start, yeah. at the start, you would still worry. You would still it's Old Trafford. You would get this kind of like, oh, this is Old Trafford. This is special. This place is. And I don't think that's, a, that's the way that it is anymore. I, I will admit that when we played Man United away, so when we were a West Brom or a Birmingham um, or even a Watford, we would play away from home at, at one of our places and you'd think, hmm, we could get into United here. We could genuinely get into them. But no, back in the day, if we were going to Old, Tra- Old Trafford, you were fearing the worst, simple as that. Yeah, I, I think Old Trafford in my early days of coaching in the Premier League well, like a Liverpool and a Man City. That was the Holy Grail, it wasn't was it? It was the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail. And it's not, not you, you don't like admitting it, but like a, a low defeat, you, you'd you have been relatively comfortable. One or two, one or two. And, and let's move on. I think since since Fergie left, um, it lost the whole aura of invincibility at Old Trafford. And it's got worse and worse. And all the teams now have improved so much around it. That there's no fear going there now. I think they enjoy it, don't it? Yeah, en- enjoy going and winning at Man United. Um, I think you you think about the cities and Liverpools. That's at an Arsenal. That's at a totally different level in terms of mindset for teams going there. And the, the way Bournemouth set up, I, I think will be a blueprint for other teams going there because Man United are not good enough on the ball to try and play through the lines and Brett you like a Liverpool, a City, or an Arsenal. And ultimately, if you give them the ball, you'll get chances. All right, let's talk about Spurs. Um, I was looking forward to this game last night. I didn't know which way it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect. I had young Jamie in my ear say it's going to be nil-nil. <laughs> it ended <laughs> Never going to be nil-nil. <laughs> it ended up five goals, but I absolutely buzzed off the game. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, we've got a big Dan Byrne segment in a minute, actually, um, because we did a podcast with him on the Fozcast uh, last week, which was fantastic. What a top bloke. Um, but Newcastle, I felt for them last night. They were just sort of running on fumes, weren't they, Mark? Yeah, I, I, I actually went with the Spurs win uh, on this one. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, Spurs, after losing to West Ham, when they should have won, they played well. They yeah. just were a little bit sleepy. So they can't do that again at home. And, and as you say, Newcastle are low battery FC at the moment. Yeah, they are, they? aren't they? You could just see yeah. everybody, Anthony Gordon, Joe yeah. Linton, Bruno, just... They didn't have that ugh, that extra bit. And they've also got to keep back a little bit for Wednesday because it's the Champions League game. Big Champions the, League So yeah, that's in their heads. The league, but but look, I mean, Newcastle will, will have gone there hoping to get a result, but um, Spurs, I looked at the teams actually and I thought they were both injury decimated and then yeah. I saw the Spurs team and I went, oh no, they haven't got Van der Ven and, and, uh, and Madison, but actually that front six, moving Kulisevsky to 10 and then he's got Richarlison in there with Son yeah. and Johnson. I thought actually, and then Bazuma and Saar there. I thought that front six is actually it's pretty decent. It's decent. decent. And, yeah. and I thought, and and, and 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 it was. And I mean, that game could have been. I think, think Newcastle did well to make it four one. It, it could have been like five six seven. They were really. Uh, what did you make of Dubravka's uh, performance last night? And do you think Newcastle will have looked at that and just start thinking, oh, maybe we need to look at something else here? Yeah, I think as soon as Pope, the reality of. Uh, a, a long-term injury. Yeah. I think, obviously, now short-term, he has to play till you get to the window. I think they will have known what to expect from his performance. But ultimately, we've spoke about it about other teams in the league. You've got a, a, a fairly big drop-off there. I don't think the first goal is a goal if Pope's in goal because when he's squared off at the near post, yeah. I he goes for it with his foot. Whether he goes for a foot or a hand, that's your decision. He was in that millimetres away, wasn't he? But Pope would get a contact yeah. on that cross. And it wouldn't be a goal. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, Rich Allison's second goal, no man's land, it's a poke, it's in. So I think there is a drop off there, and I think they will surely be looking at it. But I don't think you should take away from actually Tottenham's performance. I think Newcastle are running on empty. Yes, the goal is a big thing for them, but at the minute, they're just not the team that they need to be because they need to be 100% fresh, energy. And they'll normally run all over you when when their levels just drop. And a team like Tottenham, who were excellent with yeah. the ball and can play proper football, they're going to really hurt you. You know. I don't know why. I, th- I think they can sign De Gea now. I think he's a free transfer. I don't know why yeah. they've not done that. The, the, you've got to imagine though. Dave De Gea hasn't. Dave De Gea hasn't played football for 
eight, nine months now, you know. No. It's not going to be a, a, an instant kind of reaction to be able to just sign for a Premier League club and then go out on a Saturday afternoon and be able to just do it. It's you not, did it for Wrexham? Well, yeah, but we're talking Premier League here. We're talking I thought top you could say, Yeah, we're talking Ben Foster. <laughs> <laughs> we're, talking about, we're talking about Newcastle United yeah. playing in Champions League, in Premier League, you know what I mean, top level. And it's not that easy to just pick it up. It's going to take him a month, six weeks to maybe be able to get maybe up they're to not going to bother again. then, are they? Um, well, I, I, what I want to ask you is about um, I, you know the end of the game. It sort of kicked off a little bit. You can see there's a bit of needle. Callum Wilson getting involved with Vicario, mm -hmm. and then uh, Tottenham putting out um, I don't know if it's on TikTok or Instagram or something like that. Anyway, um, a bit of uh, a, a, it's a picture of Richarlison, and then you've got a little bit of a Callum Wilson and Mikel Antonio podcast playing in the background, where they're kind of giving him a bit of grief for getting more yellow cards this season than actual goals. Um, and Richarlison obviously bagged two in the game. Um, what did you make of all that? Well, it's interesting because I I didn't know that Callum Wilson and Antonio had a podcast, so it's obviously not doing that well. Yeah. But um, like Ooh, Tom and everyone, horrible yeah, but that. you know, but, but it's the <laughs> truth. But it's the truth because like Tom and, and everyone was mentioning off off camera about it, and and then the context changes completely because I hear Colin Wilson doing his interview after the game saying, "Oh, the goalkeeper in my face, you just don't do that." And and then the the, the interviewer is saying, "Well, oh, what a good guy, Callum Wilson, doing that." But then you you hear about the podcast and you go, "Well, actually, you're doing a podcast as a current player with another current player taking the piss out of current players." And then you're moaning because a referee, a goalkeeper's pulling faces at you. Out you. If you're going to talk the talk, you're going to have to walk the walk, and that's the problem. If you, I, I don't, fair play if they want to do it. It's a, it's a free will, but as a current player to be criticising current players, you're motivating. It's like what Grealish did about Almiron, didn't it? Yeah. You know, and look what Almiron did. I just think it's a stupid, stupid idea. You're playing your cards and letting someone react. It, it was good banter from Spurs, at least. Yeah, I think, I think I've got no problem I with it. I like the banter. I like the banter. I, like yeah, the banter. I, 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 I don't. I think obviously, like the media loves to make the, the you know mountain out of a molehill, and I don't think any of it's a big deal. To no, 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 no. Even the podcast, you know, they're not they're not fully taking the mick out of Richard. They are giving him a bit of banter because he's got a lot of yellow cards for taking his shirt off. Um, and he, the goal got disallowed. That's why they're taking the mick out of him. So it is like they're, they're trying to make something out of nothing, really. Yeah, and I think it adds, you know, you know, in, in, in the modern game where you get bloody banned for celebrating or, re or managers get banned for shaking hands too hard, I think actually, you know, all right, Wilson and Antonio might uh, might put a bit of a target on their head. For, but for us, for fans, I wouldn't do it if I was Wilson and Antonio, but please do keep doing it because it just adds a load of drama, doesn't it, which you want to see. All right, we're going to talk about Everton in a second, but as promised, that Dan Byrne clip when we spoke to him on the Fozcast this week. Have a little listen to this. I want a little breakdown of the Newcastle season so far. Talk to me about the Premier League. We want to talk about Champions League as well, but start with the Premier League. How's it been going for you so far? Yeah, good. I think it was tough, tough start. There were those run of games. I think we had first game was like Villa, City, Liverpool, Brighton. Um, then I lost three on the trot, which we didn't do the whole of yeah. that season. So it was it was disappointing, but it was a tough start. So I think like this whole the outside media side of it was like quite negative, but we knew that we were good. Like we felt as if we were still going to perform well, and I think. Having that international break just sort of reset and, and go again. Um, and then we just seemed to kick on from there. Home was seemed to be very good. I think like, I read like we're third in the table home for, yeah, yeah. which is always going to be the case because it's a bit of a fortress at the minute. Um, the way that the crowd is, we just probably need to be better um, away. But obviously we've had a lot of injuries as well. Yeah, how but, like, I was going to say about the injuries, how how difficult was this season be? with? Because if you look at that injury list, it just keeps either getting longer, then shorter, yeah. then longer again. People keep picking up new stuff. Is it just pure bad luck or what? Yeah, it is. It seems to be. It's not like, it doesn't seem very many muscle injuries. It's like big broken injuries. bones or yeah, dislocated big shoulders, which are like a long time as well. So um, it's been tough, but I, I, it's good at the same time because I think that some of the lads who haven't played many minutes have yeah, come in yeah, and yeah. people have seen how good they yeah. actually are, which are like probably lads who were here before the takeover who everyone would have thought once we get here they'd be out the door. So I'm really happy with them. People like sort of Jamal Lascelles coming in and um, playing as well as he has yeah. done. Like us knowing that he can do that. Mate, he didn't look like he'd that. been away at all, yeah, did he? Unbelievable and like real leader in the team. Got like. Uh, like Longy obviously played a lot last year, but yeah. he was one that probably wasn't given what the about credit. Lewis so, Miley, Lewis Miley again, incredible. Uh, like it's a great lad for for his age and the composure that he has. And then Champions League, how um, how much have you enjoyed this journey yeah. so far? Champions League's been crazy, like everything everything you ever dream. Of. I think like you don't appreciate the like the mental toll that takes on 
players like the for like Harry Kane to yeah. have played Champions League and international for as long as he has. Like, I do not know. Is that is that a real? Is it something that you wasn't aware of? Because obviously, when you're playing Premier League, it's just Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. You might have the odd FA Cup yeah. match, League Cup match, but then when you got Champions League in the mix as well, it's kind of Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, yeah. Wednesday, relentlessly. Isn't it's it? like and it's just like you, you play it, you recover, you go again. Yeah. You play it, you recover, you go again. And it's like that first international break, I, I had a bit of time off, so I went away and like I felt as if I'd played a season. Like mentally, it was just like I needed a break from football because yeah. it was like constantly taking over uh, everything that I was thinking about. Like you're just like, you're sat at home, but you're just constantly thinking about it. So um, that's what I would say. They don't get enough credit, the lads who do it year after year. And then the international year. break as well. They're away yeah. with the national and they're doing team. Like, so we've got like a lot of international yeah. and we get a time to, to get a break. But yeah, it's but, uh, in the same time we wanted this. So like you've got to appreciate it. So I'm not knocking it and saying like, it's too like too hard not doing it. I'm just saying. That it's it like does take Tony, but like we wanted it, we want the Champions League games, and it's amazing that we're, some of the teams we're getting to, to to come up and playing against. I've said it before, the San Siro, uh, like AC Milan. Was, yeah. Like a, when I was a kid, that was an iconic stadium. So to, to go there and and hear it, do you know like when you over there, the the crowd sounds different. Does it? Like it's like, like, it's, like it's like it's like a low, it's like a hum, like but it's constant. Right. Final question: If you had to defend against one striker, Kylian Mbappe. Or Erling Haaland, who would it be and why? Um, well, that was a tough question. <laughs> and I choose neither. <laughs> That's like Pepsi and Coke. Yeah, it is, yeah. And there is an extended version of that Dan Byrne chat as well. Uh, get yourself over to the Football Filling Clips YouTube channel. There's a link in the description down below. Give it a watch. It's a belter. Honestly, he's a top, top man. Right, Everton, you lot. 10-point deduction. If they wouldn't have had that, they would be above Chelsea in 10th in the Premier League at this moment in time, which is absolutely bonkers. Sean Dyche has turned it round. Three wins in a row now for them. Um, big wins this week. Uh, Chelsea yesterday. They, they, I could see this one coming, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think the home form, we're always going to get them over the line, but they look so comfortable in the league. We spoke months ago that this was the time, if ever they were going to end up with a 10-point deduction, that this was the time to take it. Everton uh, are a mid-table team now, when when, when I see them. Um, no surprise that they blew uh, Chelsea away yesterday. Chelsea have got nothing at the top of the field, to be fair. We had, a, we had Brozier on loan at Southampton in my last season there. As a young player, really good young player, and eventually he will get to find his level at this Premier League table. But at the minute, to play up front for Chelsea, for him, I think it's a big ask. Yes. And he's coming back from a <clears throat> crucial injury, which is no fun for anybody either. And I just thought that uh, Everton were just too strong from him in e every department. Is is is, is This is where I think a manager really comes into his own. Someone like a Sean Dyche, where Everton go, right, you know what, we are going to commit to you, Sean. And you take full control of everything. You take full ownership. You sign the players. You play your formation. You do what you want to do. And it might have taken a little while to get there, but it's very clear now to see that he has taken this Everton team who are massively threatened by relegation last season, massively threatened this season apparently, and he's turned them into a mid-table team. That's what you want from a manager, isn't it? Well, at the end of the day, Ben, when you look at the XG, <laughs> we could be in Champions League. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I do that because... He, he does mention the XG a lot. Yeah. And, and even against United, when we beat them 3-0 at Goodison Park. Oh, they, that was a they, 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 yeah. Yeah, miracle. Yeah, they had so many chances. So uh, since the 10-point deduction, they've lost to United and won three in a row. If I was an Everton fan, I'd also almost began, give us 20. Give us 20 points. Because <laughs> they're, they're so, they'd, we, still, we still, still, they, they'd still stay up. Um, but look, yeah, Everton, fantastic at Goodison Park. And uh, Deitch has settled in there and they are creating a lot of chances. They're not a boring side to watch. So fair play to them. But uh, Chelsea, wow. I mean, I, I heard what Poch said after the game and he's just like, we're a mid-table team, that's what we are and we've got to try and be better than that. And I was Ow. like... But you I know, if you're in goal for Chelsea and, and the first goal comes, I know Gallagher got sent off a couple of weeks ago for two crazy yellows, but like if I'm a coach on there as well or I'm in goal or I'm talking to you after the game as the goalie, like Everton have got a counter on the halfway line and he could do anything with McNeil. Yeah. And he ends up like stopping and like, go on, mate, you can run past me. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. In professional football, be professional. That's the time you have to make a tactical foul. Yeah. Take foul, a yellow card. Just take a yellow card. I don't know if it's because of what had happened a couple of weeks ago, but to let him run and just end up then playing him through and it's a goal, it's just crazy. And it kills you as a team. Take the tactical foul there and it's finished. And maybe the game progresses longer and longer at nil-nil and maybe Chelsea nick yeah. one. 
But don't give him a head up like that. Is, Foul him. Is Pochettino under pressure? We're, yeah. we're 16 games into the Premier League now. But, well, I think he should be under pressure because I'm fed up of Ten Hag being under pressure with the media. And yet, Pochettino spent, is, a, lot more spent money. a lot more money. It's December and it's not acceptable to be, you know, just because he's been there in a shorter period of time. However, in my opinion, no, neither Ten Hag, Eddie Howe or Pochettino should be under any pressure because I think they're all doing jobs in really difficult circumstances. And I think... Chelsea would be foolish to sack another manager because they've already done it three times in a year. And at some point, that, 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 I, think, I think Chelsea's a really difficult job. They've spent so much money badly. But I do think if they brought, if they've got 200 million, I'd go and buy Osman. I'd, I'd put a proper striker up front because I think it must be quite um, hard to be in a team and know every game, no matter how well you play as a midfielder or a defender or a goalkeeper, you're not going to score. Whereas you can be in a team that's not playing that well, but if you've got a guy who's scoring your goals, you know we don't even need to be at our best and he'll yeah. get us out of trouble. Well, that's Whereas... normally the, the, the difficulty you have with a mentality when you're a lower team. You know that you've not got lots of goals yeah. in you. And as soon as you go a goal down, yeah. it, 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 it drains away at you. But we shouldn't be having that conversation no. about Chelsea, you know? No, no, they've got no... I mean, they've tried Broher, like you said. Jackson played against United at the weekend, uh, in midweek, had two really big chances, missed them. Yeah. They need to go and buy a striker. Pochettino's right about that. And... He's a good coach, Pochettino. I, I don't think he'll take Chelsea to titles, but he can take them to sort of fourth or fifth over the next couple of years. And um, they're not going to be in Europe again next year. I mean, Maybe it's that's terrible. a good thing for them. Though, I know, but that's how company. big the job is. They're not, you know, Chelsea need to get real. I think a lot of their fans are real. It's well, a they, massive job. They, they said about them that this year, didn't they? They're not being in Europe's going to benefit them. <laughs> it doesn't, I ain't seen no proof of this so far. Uh, also, Sanchez came off injured. Um, young lad came on. Um, but that's two positions there, a striker and a goalkeeper, which... Well, maybe they go and get to here. When, you, when you're spending a billion quid and you ain't got your, your the, the top of the pitch and the back and the bottom of the pitch sorted, it's, that's, that's a worry, it's isn't really, it? It's really interesting over the last two weeks doing the, the show. I've never known a block of time when we've lost so many goalies yeah. in games. Yeah. So this week, Johnson came off, yeah. obviously Sanchez. Um, you know, we, we've had it oh, the week sweet. before, Pope and Saar. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really know the reason. I've for been that. saying this for a while, though. I mean, all these journalists who go to press conferences and ask stupid questions, what's happened to investigative journalism? Because there is a there is a blow the doors off article here, and everyone knows it. We've got the percentage of injuries now yeah. compared to any other year must be up 20, 30 percent. And I wonder why that's happening. It's game time, but it's also games like Palace Liverpool where you've got 20 minutes, stop, stop, 20 start. minutes, stop, and the stop start, start thing. Stop start. That must kill a professional footballer because you lot are at your Pinnacle, Warm. and then you wait in two go. minutes, yeah. and then not only does it impact it for the for the spectator because the momentum goes, but as a player, you know they're, they're, these are elite athletes who stop for two minutes and then go again and then stop and then go again, and they want to bring in simbins where you yeah. go off the pitch for ten minutes. <laughs> this is why we're getting injuries. Colder. I think. If, I mean, and if, and if even goalkeepers are getting injured, that shows you everything because they're used to yeah, you know having to move around. The, the nature of the training for a goal is the stop start actions, but. It may well be time on the feet and all yeah, this kind yeah. of stop-start stuff. I mean, the one thing you would say about a, a goalie in these moments, and I know a lot of goalies now are playing through the lines and they're playing the short passes, but if you've had that, you've been on your feet for 110, 120 minutes, half-time and all this kind of stuff, and all of a sudden you've got to shell one a long way, it's, the, the mechanisms are not built for the... And especially when the weather's been bad, yeah, to, colder, to survive yeah. these moments, you know what I mean? Um, a couple teams I want to talk about quickly. Um, massive wins for them both. Um, first of all, uh, Sheffield United um, at home to Brentford. This, if they're going to get out of this relegation um, trouble that they're without doubt in, uh, is a massive win. These are the kind of games that they need to win and a great start for Chris Wilder as well. Yeah, fantastic. Obviously, a tough start Liverpool in the week, but first clean sheet of the season, it's the game you have to win. And Brentford, I think, are a good Premier League team now and you probably wouldn't want to be facing them, but actually Sheffield United on the day mm. were very, very good. We spoke about it a couple of uh, games back in terms of the goal, steps inside McAtee, left foot. Yeah. It's an unbelievable finish. Deserves to win a football game. And they just battled and scrapped it out. And when you get a, if you can get clean sheets, it gives you a platform to move on because yeah. they're not going to score many, a lot of goals. I heard, I heard a commentator when he was talking about the goal saying the goalie hasn't even moved. The goalie hasn't even moved. And I'm thinking, what, what do you want him to do here, Giz? He ain't doing anything. Yeah, he could have two goalies there. He ain't saving. Well, he it. can be like me and dive and maybe get him on goal of the season. <laughs> but the <laughs> fact is that at the point when the ball's crossing past yeah, him, exactly. it's five feet across above, above the crossbar, the crossbar yeah. and in. I know. So. I always like to watch a goalie dive, but 
sometimes. He's still ain't getting there, hold, is he? Hold, hold your hands up and it, it's and get injured to... if he dies. That's he's correct. Got, yeah, Probably, got to yeah. Yeah. Really to win a match. Uh, do, do you think this changes anything? Do you think it changes the relegation picture? Um, Chris Wilder coming in, do you think he can turn it around? There, there's three teams at the bottom who are just cut adrift already for me. And, uh, you know, Burnley got a good point at Brighton. Very lucky. Again, Brighton not putting the ball in the back of the net. You've got to win your home games. Uh, Luton did well against City as well. And did well against Arsenal, but they, they just lost. Keep falling short. But they lost, didn't they? And, it, and, it, and ultimately, Sheffield United, in my opinion, will be a lot tougher to beat. They'll be a lot more aggressive and more on the front foot. And every team that comes up against them, and I think they'll know they've been in a little bit more of a physical battle yeah. with Chris in charge. I think he'll he'll rally the troops in that way. But they're not going to score enough goals to stay. And it's who you pull in. You know, Bournemouth are doing well. Fulham are doing well. Yeah. Forest will get enough points. Everton had ten Everton, points. Everton still four points above them. They're, they're all well seasoned in the relegations, aren't yeah, they? Sure. They know what to do. Um, Fulham ten goals in two matches. Um, I don't know where that. You know, this is the brilliance of the league to win five nil twice and not concede. I mean, that's bloody... And also, let's not forget, the game before that was the Anfield. Liverpool game, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he's always been a good coach, Silva, and they've always been a good team for him. And I think the loss of uh, Mitrovic really did hurt them. Yeah. So I'm pleased for them because then they are a good team to watch. They've got some really good, it's honest good, It's pros. good to see Raul Jimenez yeah. back scoring yeah. goals. Yeah. Villian looks like he's on top form again. Uh, you've got Harry Wilson, like we say, bending them ones into the top court. Where does, where does two performances like this come from, Wato, when you've been kind of... You've been bubbling along. You've been bubbling along. You've been picking up results, and then all of a sudden you get two five nilers back to back. Where does that Where does that come from? Is that fluke or what? No, I think they'll have taken even though in defeat a lot of positives from the game at Liverpool. Yeah. Mm. Look, I think they got Forest at a good time, and ultimately we're talking about physicality. They get a day's extra rest than um, West Ham. Mm. West Ham obviously had a massive win at Spurs as that emptied their tanks. So there are a few things fall in the favour, but as an attacking force, they were phenomenal. You know what I mean? and relentless in the pursuit of keep going, keep going. And and West Ham looked like they were a yard short in the game. Yeah. Look, their game against Spurs, it looked like that were their cup final this week. Fulham had an easier evening of it a day before against Forest. And they just continued that momentum. But I'm like you, I think the front of the team's phenomenal at the level that they're at in the Premier League. And all of a sudden, um, three, four weeks ago, they were fourth bottom and they've just had a, a run that's taken them out of it. But, Two five nil wins in a in three or four days is phenomenal. It, it don't matter what league you're playing in, but they're a proper team. I just think it would have game too far for West Ham this week. Yeah, tenth in the league for Fulham. Um, do you know what time it is, lads? Begins with Q. Quiz time. Come on, come on, the boys. Let's go. Right, quiz time, everybody. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, the um, Dan Byrne signed Newcastle shirt. If you want to win this bad boy, get yourself over to thecyclinggk.com. Sign up to the Legends Club. You'll see links there to follow to try and win the shirt. Dan Byrne signed shirt. Somebody's going to win it at absolute random. Um, I'm going to win this quiz today. But do you know why? Because you're getting smashed. Uh, no, well, yeah, that as well. But also, I won our um, Cycling GK work quiz on Friday night as well. You didn't win it. And I wasn't there. That's you didn't why even you turn up. That's why you didn't win. Uh, Jamie was useless. Luke was brutal, in fact. <laughs> um, and Fozzie took the dub. So I'm going to take the dub as well today. Jamie, you ready with the 10 questions? Um, yeah, I want to defend Luke, though. Did Luke smash it, by the way. He, he, he wow, was carrying we didn't So we had a bad team, then? Uh, yeah, I'd say okay. I, I did let the team down. Did you? Yeah, I did, yeah. Ooh. So I apologise. Luke's not in Unlucky, well, Lukey. Luke agrees. Uh, scores are? Uh, six to Mark, me on four, and Watto on two. Yeah. So, ready, 10 questions. Question one, which Estonian centre-half is the only Estonian to ever Hippia. score a Premier League no. goal in 2018? Estonian? I can only, I can only think of the goal. That's the only one I can think of. I don't, I don't know. I can't think of an Estonian centre-back. And if I guess, I'll look idiot. Because I'll probably guess someone who's not Estonian. So, I'm just going to say... No. I can't give you a clue, unfortunately. It's what I've answered. I don't know. Who did you say? Hippia, but it's Finland, isn't it? Uh, He's no finish. Ah, oh, I finish. <laughs> <laughs> Five. I don't know. Just Four. pass. Yeah, pass. Ragnar Klavan. No. no. Who's he? Liverpool. 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 Liverpool, Liverpool yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember him, yeah. I, I feel like if I said Liverpool, he might have got it. Nope. That's He's looking at the questions. Can you keep him in I'm not looking at the quiz. <laughs> Get the angles right. Question two. Which other English team have the same name as Newcastle? Grimsby. Park? No. Exeter. Exeter is the correct answer. 
They opened in 1902, but Newcastle had the name first when they opened in 1892. Do you know why I said Grimsby? Are they magpies? No, no they're, they're the mariners. Mariners. Right? Yeah, they are. Blundell Park. Who, who's also the magpies? Not is it not County? Not County. Yeah. Have you played at Blundell Park? Ooh. Always blustery there, mate. Is it? Ooh. Ooh. Open, open sides. One nil to Watto. Hey, I will just say this though. Always playing away at Grimsby. Fantastic for the away team. Fish and chips on the way back. Oh, fantastic. belted. Yeah. In the old days, in the old days, smell honestly. That, smell that sea air Oh, well. fish and chips coming back from Grimsby. Oh, come on. Memories, Jay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Always good by the seaside. Always good. Question three. Who was the only player to get sent off in this game week? Are you? Jordan I is the correct answer. Yeah, we're doing shots. Yep. Yeah. Jordan I red card was his first red soft. card. Crystal Palace in Very the soft. Very soft. Mm, yeah. Got Roy a yellow card. Yeah. Old Roy boy. Yeah. He wouldn't even tell us what he'd said to the ref. <laughs> he has got a potty mouth. Oh, right? A few extra <laughs> cheese in there, guaranteed. <laughs> Two nil to Watto. Question four. Who was the first player in the history? Who's the first player in, in history to win the Premier League, La Liga, and the Serie A in 2019? Who was the first player in the history to win the Premier League, La, La, La Liga? And the Serie A in 2019. Wow. Who won the Pre Who won Serie A in 2019? Was it Inter? I can't even tell you who won the Premier League in 2019. Five, four. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, Ibrahimovic, but it's no, not. Is it? No. Ashley no. Young. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, okay. oh, we're going to say him first up. Oh, my yeah. God. Now, we're going to get pouters for that. Yeah, I've not woke up. That's my excuse. <laughs> Sorry, lads. This is terrible. Awful today. Question five. What club did Spurs sign Son, Son from? Leverkusen. Leverkusen. That's the correct answer. Signed to Spurs in 2015. Question six. Two, nil, one. Brazil beat which country 2-0 in the 2002 World Cup final? Japan? No. Oh, I think I would know it, but I don't fucking know it. Twat. Germany. Germany's correct. Answer. Ooh, I needed that. I needed that. Ronaldo scored two goals for Brazil in the final. The anyway, Japan did shit. It was South Korea, I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Who, we, it was in yeah, Japan. Yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it. I got it. It's Germany. It's 2 1 1. It's 2 1 1. It's supposed to be easier reading it, mate. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I'm struggling today. I'm struggling <laughs> again. <laughs> how, many, how long late did you stay out? Friday, mate. <laughs> nervous, Ginge. Question seven, career path question. I'm good at these. I have played for Arsenal, Ipswich loan, West Brom loan, Roma loan, Southampton loan, Leon permanent. I have played for Arsenal, Ipswich loan, West Brom loan, Roma loan, Southampton loan, Leon. Almiron. No. Ramirez. No. Can you not Almiron. I'm th I know what I mean. I, I, that's not the name I meant. Can you list them teams in them? Please? Arsenal, Ipswich loan, West Brom loan, Roma loan, oh, Southampton loan. I said his name wrong. Leon. Yeah, I, I fucking knew it. Five. I, I should go. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I've got him chirping Three, away in my ear. I've read the question two, three. Yeah, can you say one. the teams again? Because <laughs> no, I can't say it. Can't say it again. Time. I can't. You're not stopping no, the pitch, because I've already told him what it is. Can I tell it? Yeah, it's Almiron, no, the goalkeeper. Almunia. No, it's not. Oh, right. Almunia. Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Oh, that's tough. I was saying Gaston Ramirez. I, I think that's I was well off with that. That's a Gaston shit question. That's what I was thinking. But like, who is he? Who I've never heard of him. Yeah, I've heard of him. Who is he? There we go. Yeah, he did. Southampton. Well, Southampton. Southampton last year, wasn't it? <coughs> yeah. Almunia. Never heard of him. So it's. I really don't worry. Yeah. Question eight. With Aston Villa's incredible home run form, who holds the record for the longest Liverpool. unbeaten run? Man City. In the league? Home run in the Premier League. Liverpool. No. Man City. No. I would say Arsenal. No. Manchester United. Chelsea. Oh. Chelsea, isn't it? Chelsea. Wow. Wait, wait, you, you only got one more left. <laughs> wow. They were 86 games unbeaten at home in the row. Oh, with Marino. And it lasted 21st of February 2004 to the 26th of October 2008. That's four years. Bonkers. That's four seasons. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Unbeaten at home, which is mental. There we have it then. 2-1-1. This is the lowest scoring quiz I think we've ever had. Ever. Question nine. 
Which club has lost the most FA Cup finals in the history of the competition? Man United. Man United is the correct Boom! answer. Boom! Who's won? What has won? Do you want me to let you fight it out for a second, eh? Ahem! <laughs> How has this happened? Well done. What are you well done. Better? Exactly. You're, you're, you're in danger, mate. You're in danger. He's looking, he's looking up and he should be looking down. Absolutely. Of wins per appearances. Absolutely, yeah. mate. Them. I think yeah. so. Percentages. Yeah. You shouldn't mock the afflicted. <laughs> <laughs> Question 10. Well, Manchester United have lost nine FA Cup finals. Wow. Chelsea and Everton have both lost eight as well. <laughs> Got to be in it to win it. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah, true, true, true. Final question, question 10. Which manager coined the term Fergie time in 1993? Wenger. No. Benitez. No. Keegan. No. It's controversial with a word in that, isn't it? Yeah, because he wasn't a manager when it... Ah, oh, Jay! No, you know what? You can all get another. All get another. He wasn't so, a manager when he said it. He wasn't a manager when he said it. He but he has playing, been a manager. He was playing for United, yes. When did, did so, uh, Paul Ince. 1993. Paul Ince. No. He was a Man United player at the time? Yeah. Mm. In 1993. And then turned to a manager. Oh, I know who it is. Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce. Bruce! <laughs> Bruce! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then the bonus question, I could tie it all put free all here. Yeah. Sure. Oh, no, no, no. You don't Watto's even get a point point for that, does he? Well done, Watto. So. He beats Mark. Mark and that. So I'll do one Think more question, fun. but this doesn't count. Watto has won the quiz again. Yeah, okay. Very good, Jake. Okay. <coughs> question eleven. Who managed Manchester City between June two thousand and thirteen? Pellegrini. Mancini. That don't even count. The, the, the bonus He's questions. Away, Come on! The bonus question don't even count. Um, <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> well, don't, well, don't forget the Dan Burns sign shirt. Um, CyclingGK.com website. Sign up to the Legends Club. Somebody's going to win it at random. That's a football fill-in. Thank you. Well done on the quiz. Well done, Mark. See you next week. See you, boys. Best.